So when a person phones in and she says, well, I've tried slow breathing, but it makes me lightheaded. And I think this is going to be really, really common. And the reason being is because the focus is on slowing down the respiratory rate. And very often the people who need breathing practices the most are people who are stressed and people with dysfunctional breathing. And this is the group that will have a tendency to breathe faster. They won't have a normal respiratory rate. They feel that they're not getting enough air. They may have some fear as well response towards their breathing. And because of the increased stress, they're breathing faster. So they may be breathing 20 breaths per minute. Okay, so the respiratory rate is too high. And yes, it does make sense to encourage that person to breathe slower, but it doesn't take into consideration that they are already feeling uncomfortable with their breathing. And if I say to a person who is breathing 20 breaths per minute, I would like you to breathe in for four seconds and out for six seconds, and that person slows down the respiratory rate to six breaths per minute. The gap is too much. And that person is going to feel very uncomfortable going from 20 breaths per minute in their normal breathing to a practice of six breaths. To compensate for the feeling of discomfort, they're going to increase their tidal volume so much. And this can have a paradoxical impact on their minute volume and they end up over breathing. And by end up, when they end up over breathing, they blow off too much carbon dioxide because that's what over breathing does. You get rid of too much carbon dioxide from the lungs that you're breathing carbon dioxide, too much of it into the atmosphere. When you lower carbon dioxide in your lungs, you reduce carbon dioxide in the blood leaving the lungs. And when this happens, you reduce blood flow to the brain. That's why she felt dizzy. But not only do you reduce blood flow to the brain, when you blow off too much carbon dioxide by breathing slow and by disproportionately having increased breaths or increased volume per breath, that you increase the volume of air that you are breathing. And I hope that kind of makes sense. You know, it's coming back to the, the food analogy. You have your plate of food, that's really what matters. So with us in breathing, it's the volume of air that you breathe in that minute that that's what matters. How much air? What's the total volume of air that you breathe across that minute? But that's calculated by the respiratory rate. The respiratory rate multiplied with the tidal volume to give you the minute volume. So if you're lowering your respiratory rate, how much is the tidal volume increasing by? And could it be that the tidal volume increases disproportionately to cause an increase of minute volume?